Well, we begin in Uvalde, Texas, where hundreds of people gathered for a vigil on Wednesday night. The tight-knit community wept and hugged, mourning the 21 lives lost in Tuesday's mass shooting. Today, we are learning more about what happened inside Robb Elementary School. Disturbing details. Officials say the gunman was inside the school for up to an hour before law enforcement forcibly entered the classroom where he was barricaded. Some parents say police prevented them from running into the building to get to their children. Onlookers also say they urged police to storm the school soon after the attack began when they saw officers not moving in. Joining me now from the scene is CBS News' Tanya Rivera. Hey, Jim. So uh, I am here uh, also with Jim, uh, who's going to tell us a little bit more about what parents are uh, saying did happen or didn't happen in those crucial moments when the gunman was inside Robb Elementary School, barricaded inside that classroom. Uh, the gunman was ultimately killed while exchanging fire with law enforcement. But investigators are still trying to piece out exactly what happened before that, uh, Jim, what do we know? Tanya, this is a very quaint neighborhood. We're in the middle of a residential middle class neighborhood. A lot of people around. There are a lot of houses just across the street from the school. So people heard the gunshots. They heard police arriving. Now, we're getting a lot of questions about what exactly happened after this 18 year old gunman went into the school behind us. There are witnesses. Parents of children who came here to the school once they heard about the shooting. Also, these neighbors living in these houses right here. They are saying that they approached police officers who were congregating here outside the school and pleaded with them to go into the school after this gunman. Now, there are questions about how long the gunman was in the school. I've seen anywhere from a half hour to an hour barricaded in a classroom after he had gone into this fourth grade classroom. So a lot of questions about that. The right. governor has spoken yeah. to us a couple of times, the media. He hasn't addressed that. No also, one from the Department of Public Safety here in Texas has talked about that yet. Also, are there some questions about how long some of the children may have remained inside the school who'd been shot, who may have been able to have been saved had they been evacuated a little bit earlier. Shot and wounded, obviously, yeah. in a situation like this. Yeah. In, in any situation, when there's a shooting or an active shooter, possibly an active shooter, the EMS and fire crews are always told to stay out until the police can safeguard to right. get the situation under control. So and, again, and it, key questions. Right, exactly. And investigators are also still talking about the role of a resource officer who apparently did engage with the gunman. Apparently he was armed when he engaged the gunman prior to the gunman entering the school. So what more do we know about that exchange, Jim? It apparently this happened in the back of the school. Mm -hmm. The gunman went into the back of the school and exchanged gunfire with this officer. Now, Tanya, there have been conflicting reports as to whether or not that officer was wounded. Right. We don't know that yet. That hasn't been clarified for us. But apparently the gunman was not hit, was not shot, and then went down a short hallway mm -hmm. into this fourth grade classroom. Right. One of the numbing things to me as we stand here outside this school, today was supposed to be the last day of school, the last day of classes for the school year today. I know, absolutely. Well, Jim Crasula, thank you so much. We'll be sure. talking to you more about this.